Good morning. Why does God use a small seed to indicate his universe-encompassing kingdom? Let's look at Mark 4, verse 30 to 34 today for a portion of scripture. Here's what it says. Jesus is speaking. And he said, To what shall we liken the kingdom of God, or with what parable shall we picture it? It is like a mustard seed, which, when it is sown on the ground, is smaller than all the seeds on earth. But when it is sown, it grows up and becomes greater than all herbs, and shoots out large branches, so that the birds of the air may nest under its shade. And with many such parables he spoke the word to them, as they were able to hear it. But without a parable he did not speak to them. And when they were alone, he explained all things to his disciples. God delights in reversals and surprises like this because it's, it causes us to regroup mentally. It's counterintuitive, and so it, it leads us to rethink and regroup and recalibrate. And most of the time, isn't it true that you and I need to regroup and recalibrate? It certainly is. And so Jesus had something to share here. And so he, so he shared, and so he shared how a small seed can become uh, a giant thing, his kingdom. We're not really worried about the kingdom being big. It's not that it's big or small that we want to be part of it. It's that it's unselfishness. It's that it's good. It's goodness. So we want to be part of his kingdom. And here, something that begins very small uh, grows into something very large so that the birds of the earth can can uh, take cover under it. And the, the gospel is for everybody who's willing to come and embrace it and come under its goodness. So a very interesting business here how Jesus teaches. Another thing that's kind of interesting here also is how he taught them with these little snippets, these little parables, kind of like the videos of, of the gospel era, these short videos that we have all over the YouTube today. Jesus taught them with these little parables. And another thing that's interesting here is it said that he spoke the word to them as they were able to hear it. He never gave them too much so that they would be, you know, oh, we can't digest this. He would give them just what they needed. He wouldn't give them any less because he wanted them to grow spiritually very quickly. But he gave them just what they could absorb in these small pieces. And parable teaching was one of the key ways that he taught them. And when he was alone, he explained all these things to his disciples. So. We want to be in the Bible, and we want to have the advantage of this teaching, too, because just as it was good for them, for them to be taught that, it's pretty good for us, too. After all, our attention span, they say, is now down to a very small amount, and I'm, I think I've been affected. I, it, I think I have. Well, let's, uh, let's pray together. Dear Father in heaven, thank you for your goodness to us. Thank you for this illustration of your kingdom. Thank you that your kingdom uh, may start off appearing very small, but grows gigantic and that it's, it is a good kingdom. And I'm glad for things that are, that are not only gigantic, that doesn't really matter, but that they're good, and your kingdom is so good. Bless, I pray, each one hearing this devotional thought today. Watch over them and give them a good day under your good canopy of your kingdom. Thank you for hearing our prayer, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So God be with you today. Have you ever bumped into anything about the kingdom that sort of surprised you? I just want to invite you, if you have a moment, to just make a note about it, a sentence or two in the comments below, and that would be maybe useful to other people to see something that you saw that you hadn't thought of before. God be with you, and you have a wonderful day today in Christ Jesus.